Okay, so what we want to look at is how to find the different amounts of carbohydrates you'll get in different food. Now, top tip number one, believe it or not, is simply look at the food packaging label. On the back of this, you'll see nutritional information, and that'll tell you the amount of carbohydrates you get inside per 100 grams. And we can use reference guides as well, so you can use a book or an app, and we can actually weigh out and calculate carbohydrate content or make estimations based on a visual size of portions. Now, the reason a packet is a great first port of call, if available, that is, is that it's easy and accurate reference to what you're generally eating. So most packets will refer to either amount per 100 grams or amount of carbs per portion. Remember, though, you're looking for total carb amount and not just of which sugars. If you are measuring a variable amount, you're best looking at the amount per 100 grams and using your own scales. If you are eating something that can be calculated in a portion, such as a biscuit or a packet of crisps, you can refer to the portion size amount. So with reference guys, they will usually tell you information per 100 gram, but also a lot of digital app versions do give you a visual picture along with the portion sizes and grams. Okay, so we've got all these different foods that we're trying to work out the carbohydrate levels of each one. Now, as we mentioned before, a great place to start is looking at the food product labels. But what about the rest of it? How are we going to get started? So we're looking at the product labels for the guide to total carbohydrate content. So we've got this bunch of snacks here. Let's start with the chocolate bar. Penguin. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. I'll have a flick through. I don't see, I see a quality guarantee and a terrible joke, but I don't see any carbohydrates. Yes, I think we might actually need the sleeve packet for this one. Let's have a look. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so this one is per bar 12.7 grams. That's per bar throughout the packet, yep. not the whole thing. Okay, what about crisps? Because these usually come on their own. All right, you've got carbohydrate levels here, 15.9 grams in each packet. Okay. So that's handy. Let's go for the yogurt, I think, next. Yeah, and like the penguin, it hasn't actually got the, the actual label actual. on there. So we'll get the sleeve for this one as well. Okay, so this one is 16.4 grams. So that's very helpful. One thing we haven't spoken about yet, though, is food that doesn't come in a package, such as fruit and veg. Now, how do you think you find your carbohydrates in this? Guessing that you weigh it? Correct. I mean, what you can look at is your apps and your, your carb guides, which will tell you the, the exact amount of carbohydrates you'll get in different fruit and veg and, you know, things that don't come in packets. However, what it doesn't tell you is that all sorts of fruit comes in different sizes all over the world. So the best thing you can do is, well, weigh it and find out for yourself. I'm guessing, though, you're going to take the skin off to work because well, you yes, don't eat we, the skin. we do that first. Yeah. But right, then okay. we weigh it and we yeah. find out for ourselves. Okay. Right. You just zero go. all that for me. Yeah. I'm placing my banana down. So the banana is 65 grams. Now it's quite an easy calculation we take from here, but we're going to be using it a lot, so I'm going to write it down. If you can take our trusty app, which yep. tells us the number of carbs in food, and tell me how many carbs should be in that banana, I'm going to use my calculator and we'll get out of this alive. <laughs> okay, right. we have got 24 grams in 100. 24 grams in 100. Now yep. the calculation from here is you would divide that number by 100 and then you multiply it by the weight of the food. So we had 65 grams, wasn't it? Yep. That was 65 grams. Right then. And the number you will end up with is 15.6 grams in there. Now, that's a bit of a faffy number. So you round that up to 16 grams and that is how much carbohydrate you'll get in that banana. Well, I think I can handle that then if I've got a calculator. It's not too hard. Now, some people can do the sums in their head, but hey, this is not a maths test. So it's about getting the diabetes under control right now. And I prefer to use a calculator often from my mobile phone. Now, if you know the carbs per 100 grams of food, you can easily work out the carbs you're eating. Of course, you need to know the weight of the food item. And it's really important to weigh, weigh, I say again, weigh when you're learning about calculating carbs. So, spaghetti bolognese, one of my favourites. Absolutely. Where should we start with this? Well, uh, we know that the beef mince is pretty much carb-free, and probably the whole meat and tomato sauce is going to be low carbs as well. Although some jars that you can buy have quite a bit of sugar in, so if it's made from a jar, then you should check the label to be sure. Now, let's presume it's all home-cooked, with no added sugar or sauces, with any carbs in. That just leaves the spaghetti to work out. So, are you going to tell me that I have to weigh it out to my spaghetti? The short answer being yes, Yes, we do need to weigh out the spaghetti. In time, you might learn some tricks to measure out portion sizes using consistent bowls and mugs you might have lying around in your house. But yeah, we need to weigh the spaghetti first. And where do you get the information for the carbs as well? Well, often the packet will have information on carbohydrates, but you need to make sure you get a total value for the pasta when cooked. 
I don't get that. Why is that then? Well, because pasta, potato, rice, things like that, they sometimes get or even lose weight during the cooking process because they can absorb water or even lose water. Right, I was thinking that. I felt so. Yeah. I felt you were thinking that. Just checking you know what you're talking about. Now, if we look at the back of a packet like this, you'll see it only tells us the dry value of the carbohydrates within this. So, that's where we pick up our handy guide. Our guide tells us that... Uh, that white cooked spaghetti holds 22.2 grams per 100 within the, uh, within the spaghetti. Okay, should we weigh the spaghetti? I think we should. So I'll give you your bowl and zero you in, so you're ready. Okay, I've taken the meat off already. So let's get our pasta and put it in. That's that looks up. very appetising. <laughs> if anyone needs any tutorials for how to cook beautiful pasta, <laughs> That's the next week. So what have we got? Okay, so we've got 332 grams there. Right, now we're just using the same calculation that we used before. So, what was the value of carbohydrates per 100 grams? 22 grams. 22 grams. Now we divide that by 100. Once again, I'm going to use my trusted calculator to do all of the maths for me. There we go. And then we multiply that by the weight of the, the spaghetti itself. So that's 332. Yeah, that's right. 332, which gives us 73.04, which should round down to 73 grams. So we're getting the numbers together. So far, not rocket science. It's not. It's not too bad at all. But it does um, take some pre-planning. It does. Um, but with good habits and accurate working out, then you know it's worthwhile. And it's going to help calculate insulin doses consistently and correctly. Right, let's have a blast at the lunchbox then. I think okay. I could give it a good go now. What do you want to start with? The apple? Yes. Great. If you want to check the reference guide okay. and find out how many grams of carbs are in. So that is 11.5 grams per 100 grams of apple. Right. Now, if you want to weigh that, I'm going to get back to my trusty board and find out the calculation. Okay. So that was 11.5 grams. Yep. Divided by 100. Multiplied by the weight, so how much does it weigh? That is 106 grams. 106 grams, which gives us 12.19 grams of carbohydrates, which you'd round down to 12 grams okay. for the apple. Okay, what else do we have? Should we do the crisps next? I think we should. So we know that the information is normally on the packet, mm. so that is 15.9 grams per pack. 15.9 grams, you want to yep. write that down. I'll, I'll pick up. I'll pop up or pick up the penguin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, actually, they're not on the back of these, so we've got to get the larger family pack uh, yeah, to work here. out the carb content. Okay, so that says per bar, that is 12.7 grams. 12.7 grams, get that written down. Yeah. Slightly more challenging. Sandwiches, cheese and ham, to be precise. Ah. We've got to get the loaf, I think, for the yes. bread to get the content. Does that have it per slice? It does indeed. It's got carbs are 20.6 grams per slice. Since there are two on the sandwiches, I guess we need to double that. We do. Okay, so that's 42 grams round okay. up. Okay. And what about the cheese and ham? Uh, there's no carbohydrates in cheese and ham, so we're okay. You're Superb. just showing us now. I am showing God. <laughs> it's in my nature. So last but not least, we've got the carton of apple juice, and it tells us there's 10.4 grams on this carton. So is that... 10 carbs. Well, not quite, because there's 200 millilitres, and that was only per 100, so you'll round that up to 21 grams, actually. Okay. That's it. That's the lunchbox. Now, after eating all that, I can't say that I really fancy breakfast. I don't blame you, but funny you should say that, actually, because I've been told breakfast can be quite hard to, uh, to calculate, with things like milk and cereal being difficult to measure. Is that a challenge I'm detecting there? I think it very well may be. Right, come on then, carb cutting genius. Let's see what you're made of. Okay, well, starting with something like cereal, it does tell you on the back uh, how many carbs will be in each portion. So you've got 30 gram portions here and 25 grams of carbs. So mm -hmm. that's a good place to start. Okay. If we zero this in, I'll just pour that out. Done. And what about the milk as well? With the milk, you just pour that on. Not yeah. yet. Oh. We want to uh, we want to measure that actually because once okay. you've measured it, we know exactly how much is going in, okay. and then we can do some calculations. So, shall we say a hundred mil of milk? That looks about right to me. There you go. Okay. Oh, boots. That looks a bit much for me. Well, you can actually just pour on as much as you want because okay. we can measure that later. So, how much have you gone for? Okay. So I've gone for... Well, there's 30 mil left. So 70 mil is in that's there. That's 70 mil left. Okay, right. I'm going to go back to my trusty board because <laughs> that's where I do my finest work. I'm taking my calculator with me. So from the reference uh, app we had before, yeah. how many carbs would you find in 100 mil? 
So that is 4.7 grams per 100 ml. 4.7 grams. So we yep. divide that, as per usual, by 100, and we multiply that by the weight. So that was 70. That was 70 ml. Yeah. Equaling, bear with me as technology catches up to the vastness of my brain, 3.29. Three point two nine grams of carbs, so you can round that down to three. But we need to add that now to yeah. the cereal already, so we have twenty five grams. Yeah. Added that to three point two nine. That's twenty eight point two nine, or twenty eight if you like, grams of carbs in a bowl of cereal. I'm impressed. You should be. We're getting better at this. We are indeed. You've certainly caught up, which has been really fulfilling for me. Thank you.